So next we talk about structures. A structure contains members which are types with names. Here's an example. So we have the name, the identifier H, which is of type integer, and we have name, which is an array of 32 characters as a second member, and these two are members of the structure person. Okay, so this is now a new type, and we actually declare this type, which means it does not reserve any space in memory, it's just a type specified for us. Here you see in Bakos Nauer form this declaration syntax, and you can have any number of identifiers and types here underneath. Okay, so person is now of the of the structure type, and we can use this struct person as a type to declare variable of it. And we have two members, int and character array, with these two identifiers. Okay, now how can we use it? Well, we can use it to declare new variables. We have now a struct person check. So check is now a type that has those two elements, age and name. And we can also use it to create arrays or any new compound data type, like a struct again. Here we create an array of 100 friends of this type person. I, why it's possible to declare the type of the structure and directly use it to declare the variables with it, I would not recommend to do so. But here, this is a very typical syntax that you will find in code. Okay, so we have here the variable identifiers, and both of them have this kind of type struct person. Okay, now what can we do with a struct? Well, we can assign a struct. That's now by possible. You can assign person one is a, is another person two, which means all these member variables get copied over. We can access the members of a variable using the dot punctuator. That's how it's called. So it's just a dot. So I can access the age field of a variable of this struct person type by saying check dot age. Okay. Also, you can use it on the left hand side if you like, or on the right hand side like here. You can use it to print a name and it behaves just as a single variable. You can use the size of operator again to determine the size of a structure. And we can also figure out the location of a member internally inside the struct. So we can use offset of our struct person, h, and then we know how many bytes inside of this structure is this field stored. We can also find out the address of a structure variable using the, um, our ampersand operator. Good. How do you initialize a structure? Well, you can assign one structure to another when you declare and de define the structure variable. Here we have author as a new variable and we assign it immediately with the values of check. So we can also, you know, declare um, the variable and then initialize one member at a time, like author.h is 87. But wait a minute, when we have here, we try to assign an array, we know we cannot assign an array, so we cannot say author.name equals something name, that doesn't work. So we have to use our a, a copy function. So there are other ways of initializing um, data structures. One is the initializer list, so we can here, when we create a variable check, we can use our curly brackets notation again. And here we have to use the exact order of the um, elements that we want to initialize. So 20, and then here we have our string. That means, as when we look at the declaration, we had first age and name. That's exactly the order by which the variables get assigned. So 20 becomes the age and this becomes the name. As this is a bit cumbersome for very big structures, you have also initialized a list with field names. So we can in the curly brackets write something like dot age equals 20 and dot name equals check and the compiler will reorganize it accordingly to make it fit. 
So I talked a little bit about the offset off operator already, which is in fact just a little macro that computes um, the locations in memory. Somehow, like any variable, we have to represent these structures in memory. How do we do that? So the compiler assigns the members for efficiency um, to some boundaries that is very machine specific how that works. Okay, so in, if we have a structure like this one where we have a character C and an unsigned integer with um, 16 bits, I, then what we will get in the memory representation we might get is that it, at the beginning of the location we get our character Z and then we have one byte unused which will be here it says undefined, so it's never been used. And then we have two bytes here for our two byte variable i. Okay, so typically a variable that has, that has a size of four bytes gets aligned to four byte boundaries. One that has one byte, such as a character, gets aligned to a one byte boundary. Okay, that's the typical behavior um, as a rule of thumb. Uh, for efficiency, what you can do, you can re reorder the, the types by first having the, the big types first and then the small types. Okay? And we'll do a little exercise about this. So now you should do a little, think, think a little bit about a structure. And I ask you to write down information that is contained on a DVD with four members and kind of write down the declaration of such a structure and then sketch a possible representation of the memory. You can make a guess. Okay, here is just an example um, how it looks like. Just think a little bit about it for three minutes and um, proceed then afterwards. Okay, so I hope you had, you had a go on this task. We, will, we can discuss it, but I won't show you the answer now.